Good morning to everyone. Uh, today is the second session of the Lightning Talks, and we have five talks today. Uh, Sarah Bolero from IMFN will talk about their deployment there. Jan Hokagrek will talk about also how they are using Open Nebula at Netera. Carlos from the Open Nebula project will share our experience participating in the Cloud Catalyst project. Um, Kishore from Megan will show us how they build a cloud in a box. And the last talk will be Daniel Molina. And I will share with you some of the development that we are doing in the Panacea project. That's an European project that we are part of it. So we are going to start. Remember, there are this, each talk is five minutes. We'll have time for questions at the end of the, the all the talks. Thank you. Okay. Hello. I am Sara Vallero. I work um, as a cloud administrator and developer at the computing center of the INFN Torino. So uh, maybe not all of you know what the INFN is. It's the Italian National Institution for Nuclear Physics, which has nothing to do with nuclear plants. It's just fundamental physics studies. So our um, data center in Torino is, I would call it a medium-sized data center. We have 1.6 um, peta of storage, 69 uh, hypervisors, and 1,200 job slots for a total of 200 virtual machines. Everything is managed with Open Nebula, of course. And so our cloud project actually started quite soon. In 2009, we have a cloud in production. And I think within our environment, at least, we were the first really to switch to the cloud. And cloud. And the reason, the main reason at the time was, well, to simplify management of the available resources. So the big customer we, we, have, we serve at our cloud is the WLCG tier two for the Alice experiment at CERN. We also have another tier two for the best free experiment in, uh, in China. And we support computing for up upcoming, upcoming experiments like Panda at GSI or Bell, Bell 2 at uh, Keck. Another big customer of the facility is the virtual analysis facility for ELIS, which means uh, interactive data analysis for LHC and elasticity. I say a word about it uh, in the next slide. Then we also support medical imaging processing, some smaller theory, uh, local research group, and uh, virtual farms on demand. I also will talk about it in the next slide. So the way the infrastructure is structured, <laughs> so we have two clusters of uh, hypervisors for two different classes of uh, virtual machines. So we have the service class machines, which are our pets. So they, because they provide critical services and they need to have uh, in, in inbound and outbound connectivity. We need to um, have live migration to con for con continuity of service. And these are server class hardware. And they have no particular I.O. requirements. And the image repository is shared. And uh, so you can see from the sketch in the bottom, you see in red, is the, virt um, the virtual machine images repository. This is uh, actually this is not replicated, but it's, um, it's shared among all the two, the host of the two clusters. And in green, you can see the situation for the um, running VM data store for the services cluster. So this is uh, basically the underlying file system is cluster FS. The um, volumes are uh, replicated on two storage servers and then exported to all the um, hosts of the services um, cluster. And then we have the cattle, which are really the computational workforce. So it's basically 9% grid worker nodes. And they need to have a very good performance in IO towards the storage, of course, for data analysis. They are just lower class hardware and what's interesting in our setup is that in this case uh, to allow for a fast startup of the virtual machines the um, running vms data store is actually cached on the hypervisors themselves with a custom tool developed in our institute uh, okay so what are we doing in the, with that cloud? Uh, first of all, we have developed a toolkit for virtual, virtual farm uh, provisioning on demand uh, now yeah 
we started quite early, so I think Open Nebula didn't really offer yet all the nice features that I could see in, in these two days. So what we do is uh, we have developed it by hand, uh, a toolkit, which is based basically on uh, v, uh, v routers with OpenWRT. We have this elastic, maybe people generally call it floating public IP. Another ingredient is that we provide persistent uh, disk space with the iSCSI data store. AC2 interface and the contextualization is done with Cloud Unit. Then elasticity. So the idea is to have a system or an application that is able to expand and, and shrink according to, to its needs. So uh, of course this, this can work only if you have infinite resources and it's not completely our case because we always basically work in saturation. But still we have this in place for the virtual analysis facility. So we have the big tier two block, which is basically something that you cannot touch and resize. And then we have this medium size application that if there is space, space expands and would shrink again whenever the resources are found to be idle. And this is the only implementation of elasticity we have so far and is also something that's done by hand. Uh, then there is, let's say, for the next future, a project to, um, to build uh, an INFN, uh, well, in Italy, <laughs> Italian-wide uh, cloud is an INFN project. Mostly, I mean, all other units in Italy are based on OpenStack, but we want to maintain the biodiversity by keeping Open Nebula because it just suits our needs and we don't need to get more complicated than that. But of course, we need to be able to um, uh, interoperate with OpenStack, especially for services like yeah, Keystone. So we, there is some work that we have to be done, to be that has to be done with this respect. And finally, we have developed a uniform monitoring interface, both for the applications running on the cloud, some of them at least, and for the infrastructure. And this is based on the so-called ELK stack, so Elasticsearch, Blockstash, and Kibana. And our goal would be to develop a very simple toolkit to uh, provide monitoring as a service to the um, users of the virtual farms on demand or any tenant in our cloud. Hello, my name is uh, Jan Horacek and I'm from Czech Republic. I work for a company named uh, Adnetera. We are based uh, on Java and open source software. We are about 150 uh, people in the company and uh, about 60% uh, is uh, our developers. We have uh, 10 Etsy admins and we do all the stuff with uh, CentOS. And uh, now we have uh, some environment for about uh, three years with uh, Open Nebula. What we do is uh, making webs, but it's not only webs. We do a content management system based on Java, and then we do something like uh, make product from everything, or something we, we do in our production. Like we do Soika, that's personalization tool. Smarty is a J meter on steroids. It's very good with, with uh, Open Nebula. It could make uh, a lot of load of on web servers and to use the possibility to start more more nodes on Open Nebula. And we have Eva. Eva is a web accelerator, it's based on open source software. And uh, it's uh, in reality it's uh, be, uh, be before the before the Open Nebula servers. We have Open Nebula uh, for almost three years. Uh, we use it as uh, VDC, as like uh, virtual data center, as VMware, but with some cloudy, cloudy things. Like uh, you could use it uh, for regular VMs, but you could use it for non-persistent uh, machines. We have uh, eight nodes. It's not that much. It's a bit small. If you see some some installation, someone will, was talking here, but it's useful in this case too. I think it will be it will be useful in three instances. Uh, we have uh, about 11 terabytes of data storage, uh, 20, 260 images, and about 150 VMs on it. Everything is in production. Small part of it is for internal use, but uh, more than half is for uh, our clients and services for clients. We have Open, uh, Open Nebula uh, running on CLV, CLVM. Uh, it's not a standard uh, solution, but uh, it's working very well. We, have, uh, we are using it for 
the complete uh, image data store, like it, it's used for uh, image data store, but for system data store too. It has some hacks. Um, we have a GFS2 for the shared storage, and we are completely separated from the compute nodes. Like we don't have uh, the LVM or GFS connected to the to the management node. As I said, we use the LVM as system data store. Now it's not that big problem, but in the version we started with 3.2, uh, it was a big deal because it was not supported and we had uh, hacked the drivers, the original LVM examples. It was only example at the time. But now we stepped through this year, we had to, for almost two years the version 3.2, but during this year I upgraded the Open Nebula to the latest stable and it's very nice. Everyone got the new interface and everyone is happy with it. Uh, now we are using still the LVM driver for system data store. It needs only five small patches, so it's not a big problem to use it this way. We have shared storage on SAS, so it's almost native performance and the ephemeral device, ephemeral volumes are not uh, on local storage. They are also on the SAS storage. Yeah, what I like about uh, Open Nebula is that there is always something you can play with and hack on because uh, it's uh, very modular. So I have uh, almost everything that I cope with on GitHub. If you take the presentation, there is some there are some links. Uh, as I said, uh, every message system does a storage. It's a couple of uh, patches, but it works well. We are using. Uh, IO capping and IO boosting. It's uh, cool when you have uh, a lot of machines that you have a control with over but uh, don't have the image what's going on on them all the time. Like it's started logging or started uh, a lot of uh, a lot of debugging if the developer turns it on. So we have a uh, capping of uh, the IOs and the CPU and then we have uh, we use we are using we are using uh, the C groups for adding more through the Open Nebula external uh, add added uh, parameters. So, if you look at the presentation, I have a lot of nice small things like DNS per VM that's not uh, part of standard Open Nebula, and it could be simple, it could be made uh, complicated with uh, talking to the DNS server, but it could be just a cron job that makes the list for. DNS mask, for example. Thank you. Well, hi everyone. My name is Carlos Martin. I'm part of the Open Nebula team. I'm one of the developers. I'm going to talk very quickly about the Cloud Catalyst project. Um, the project is a, a European research project under the, the FP7 program. It started in September last year, and uh, Open Nebula is part of the project through the Complutense University of Madrid. And the goals of the project are to reinforce the European cloud ecosystem and the community around it. And more importantly, uh, the main goal of the project is to support entrepreneurs, researchers, software developers to create new cloud-based solutions. And we're going to do this with um, the Cloud Accelerator Toolbox. This will be a collection of guidelines, best practices, use cases, um, business, mo business model templates, um, recommendations. This will be oriented for entrepreneurs and people wanting to develop new solutions. But it also will help um, incubators and similar institutions to, to help their, their customers to create new programs around this toolbox. And we have already started uh, working on this toolbox. We did a survey in Cloud Catalyst, and we're going to study the, the results to create trend reports and uh, study the main motivators and barriers that companies find when they try to use a, a cloud solution, uh, a new cloud solution. And this will be translated to innovation opportunities that we can uh, offer the new entrepreneurs interested in, in our results. 
So for example, I copied here a, a couple of relevant graphics. As you can see on the left, uh, the, main, uh, the main cloud manager solutions, uh, the level of awareness, how many people are already using it. You can see at the top, well, maybe you can't, but it says um, the most used ones are VMware, OpenStack, and Open Nebula. So um, open source is highly relevant. That's a good data. Uh, as you can see on the right, if, um, we also can study the, the appreciation of open source solutions by uh, separating the, the types of company by years on the market. And we're doing this kind of a study to help entrepreneurs know their target customers. So for example, they will, be, uh, they will have insight about uh, the target companies. Uh, companies working in banking uh, industry will have different security requirements than companies in education, for example. Or if they're targeting big companies with uh, lots of employees, they, they will see from our report that uh, these companies appreciate integration with identity managers like LDAP, for example. And if they are going to create a product targeted at small companies, maybe they can forget about that kind of integration and just um, keep the time to market um, lower. We have already presented some of these um, conclusions in the first annual event we had in Bled, Slovenia. And we plan to have more conferences and boot camps. So if you are interested in this, you can follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, you can subscribe to our mailing list or just ask me in the break. And that's all I had prepared. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Vardarajan. They call me Rad. I'm from uh, Megam System. And uh, Megam System develops uh, a lot of tools around uh, Open Nebula. And uh, I'd like to explain the reason behind the concept of uh, cloud in a box. And I see a lot of uh, system programmers, platform architects, and a uh, lot of uh, administrators. But uh, there's always a need for uh, a simple platform or something when they really want to use the system. Like what he told about, you just want a, a Hadoop cluster to be launched or just a CRM tool. Or we want to write to get into the job and hide all the complexity around the platform. And that is how we added this concept. And this is a side project when we are working on our past platform. So is this a new concept? No, there are already a lot of other projects in the, in the market. It's not a new concept. But uh, we are slightly different from what is available in the market, mainly because uh, you can see that uh, Ubuntu box, which is based on uh, Ubuntu with their pass uh, tools and other things, it's commercially available, you can buy it, and it's, it's almost similar, like you can spin off uh, virtual machines and do all the orchestration, everything with their platform. And uh, CMicro is a high performance uh, cluster with vital uh, core uh, hardware. And uh, that's also based on Ubuntu, and uh, it has a similar concept. And there are other things in the market like uh, Nebula. This is uh, OpenStack implementation uh, around, <coughs> around that. And it is, um, uh, it's also based on OpenStack, but they have done some modifications to that. And Nimbox is uh, uh, like a KVM-based. Uh, we don't know what is the underlying operating system, but it's KVM-based. And uh, scale computing is also KVM-based, but completely proprietary interfaces. And Newtonics is also KVM-based, but completely proprietary. Uh, they're all. Uh, Let's say they are all cloud in the box concept, but what, where is the problem in this is that it's not scalable. You just buy a box and you want something more or something, you have to buy another box, and that's how it is. That's the concept behind it. And also, it's not customizable. There is nothing you can tinker around. You just install it, and then you start using the, whatever interface they are built in and start using the system. So where we want to be different is that we want to um, use Open Nebula as a base. And you want to offer all the facilities what Open uh, Nebula offers in a very easy, uh, easy fashion. We just automate the whole process. Uh, so we have everything built inside that, and our automated process installs the Open Nebula, and you have DRBD for your, uh, you know, block uh, replication and uh, disaster recovery and uh, uh, these solutions. Uh, and uh, we have the Megam that's our pass also built in, so that you can launch application from any source repository from GitHub and all that. And uh, we have public cloud pl uh, plugins also built in Megam so that you can just expand it. It can do cloud busting to Amazon or any of uh, the public cloud infrastructures. 
and we had a storage built in and uh, a visual data center created. So all this we are uh, offering as a completely automated platform. You just download the ISO and you start installing it on your bare metal server in a completely over the network. It's, a, it's an automated process. So <clears throat> this gives an idea how we do it is like you take the bare metal server, you, you download the ISO, you register in the, in the Megum uh, pass, you get your uh, credentials, then you put in the credentials and it starts downloading all the packages and slowly installs into the computer, um, into, the, into the bare metal server. And uh, we use Cobbler for the automated install of uh, all the packages. And OpenEbola, we don't tamper with it. We just uh, install the way it is. So all the facilities, features, whatever is available in OpenEbola is available here. And uh, if you want, after installing the first base unit, if you want to add more nodes, you just go inside, install the plug in the next server in the network, and it automatically guides to the, the whole process. So as we see that we have the, the basic facility, uh, when you compare to these, uh, uh, these particular products, we have the, the combination of both. We have the best of both worlds. We have the flexibility, scalability, and at the same time, we have the ease of uh, installation. And this will help, you know, even people who are not very uh, highly technical about the whole thing and they want to go ahead using OpenEbola, we feel it would be a great tool. And it's a, it's a product which we developed as a part of our past development. That'll be all. Thank you. So this is the last talk. You may know I'm Daniel Molina, and I'm part of the Open Nebula team. And in this talk, I'm going to show you our work at Panacea. And Panacea is a um, European project that we are part of it. And the main objective of this project is to build a, to provide a proactive autonomic management of cloud resources. Basically, the, the, the idea here is that we deploy a, a group of VM, uh, VMs, a service, and when these VMs are running, they have to be able to reconfigure, it, to self-protect, self-heal from inside the VM. So we have to provide an effector to do these actions. So we design an architecture for this. This is basically the idea. We have a service manager where the users instant instantiate the services. The cloud manager uh, schedule these VMs and take the resources needed. And then from inside the VM, we need to contact the, the cloud manager. So the VM has to be aware that he's part of a cloud. He has been deployed in a cloud. And what are the VMs that are part of the services, the service also. When the VM is, knows these things, he will be able to shut down new VMs or start new VMs based on, on a prediction model that is built using a machine learning framework. This is not the part that we are developing, but we are basically providing the, the mechanisms to self-protect, self-reconfigurate, and self-optimize the, the service. So this architecture uh, applied to Open Nebula would be the cloud manager is obviously Open Nebula. One flow would be the service manager, where you can define several VMs and dependencies between different roles. And then we have the one gate component. We developed this component when we included the elasticity rules in one flow. We realized that we needed a way so that the VM can provide information of the application that is, that is running in the, inside the VM. So the VM can push monitoring to Open Nebula and apply el elasticity rules based on those uh, values. So for this project, we used this component and we extended it. And now using one gate, you can ask I will show you in the last slide what are the available actions, but this is how it looks like. One flow on top of Open Nebula, and then you have one gate running in your, or in your infrastructure. And the VM contacts the server using a token provided by Open Nebula, and is only able to retrieve information of itself. 
So this is the, the development we did for the project. We developed uh, in a small command line interface that is injected in its uh, running VM. And the VM can retrieve information of itself. It's like uh, one VM so can push information to the VM. And also, if it's part of a service, it will be get information of all the VMs of the, of the service. Even it can, the VM can share information. It can update one of the templates of a running VM and retrieve it in another one. And even uh, the VM can scale the service. So I need uh, five more workers so the VM can send this action to Open Nebula using one gate. And basically that's all. So we have finished with the talks. So you have any questions for any? Do you have any questions for any of the talks? Are you hungry? <laughs> okay, then one talk. It's for Sarah Valero. Um, what is your experience with GlusterFS? Do you like it? Is it uh, working properly? Some smaller storage where for some reason it would start to fill bricks basically randomly. So some brick was filled and some other were empty, so it was a huge mess. I don't know why. Maybe it was some misconfiguration because we left all the parameters more or less in the default mode. I don't know. But apart from these little accidents that happened recently, I would say we have no problems. So. Anyone else? So we are done. Burn. Lunch. <laughs>